Live from Heritage Christian, it's the game of the week. It's Elwood 0-22 taking on Heritage Christian 7-13. and Do not mind the records, folks. It is one week before sectional play. Both teams have to be tuned up, ready to play sectional basketball. So this is an important t test for both teams. Both teams will do something different tonight to get ready for sectional play. We're getting ready for sectional play, but it's the last game of the year on Indiana SRN, a regular season, and we cannot wait to show it to you. Sean Crawl, Keith Myers, live at courtside at Heritage Christian. It's coming your way next on Indiana SRN. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Heritage Christian School, where, as Keith said, it is the regular season finale here for the Eagles as they host the Elwood Panthers. Good evening, everybody. I am Sean Crawl. Thank you so much for joining us on Indiana SRN. As Keith said, Heritage Christian comes in at 7-13, 0-5 in the Circle City Conference. Very young team, not a single senior on the squad. Speaking of young, Elwood is young as well. They come in at 0-22, coached by Matthew Korn. And they have one senior on their squad. And here's what we can say, folks. There is nobody in this gym more than Elwood that wants to walk out of here having a victory. They do not want to end the season 0-23. Do not overlook that in the slightest because these kids do not want to take the over for the season. So they are going to fight their hearts out tonight. And Heritage Christian knows that. Hopefully Corey Jackson has them ready coming off a 55-51 victory Tuesday night at Shortridge. Thank you very much to Alex Stevens for subbing in for me as I was a little under the weather. But joining me now is my partner, as always, Keith Myers. And Keith, you know, we, we did talk about it. People will look a lot at the records and go, ooh, what are, what are we going to do here? But I'm telling you, you know, nobody likes to go through the season without having won a game so these kids are going to fight tooth and nail to make that try and happen tonight for Elwood. I've been 0-22 Sean in my coaching career <laughs> and one of the things that we tell our kids the last, and, and it, it happened in a playoff game what we told our kids at the during the playoffs is look you're 0-0 you know and that's exactly what Matt has to say to his kids okay you're 0-22 our new season begins tonight let's work on everything that we need to do to get ready for sexual play and our new season begins tonight. Let's win one, and then let's beat Alexander. Then let's beat uh, Madison Grant. Then let's win a sexual championship because maybe we'll be the only school in history ever or in the state ever to go 0-22 in regular season or 1-22 in regular season and win the state championship. That's what the mindset is for Covenant, uh, for uh, Elwood tonight. That is the truth. It is the final for Heritage Christian as well. And they are looking to end on a good note, eight and thirteen. They are hosting the two A sectional uh, here, and we will have that for you next week. The draw is out. We see who they are are facing early in the tournament. We will cover that for you as we go on through tonight's game. It is it is um, a, a good night. We've got some starting lineups for you. We can we've got all kinds of information for you. But now we'll take a break as will be on Indian SRN. Follow us. Tweet us at Indian SRN. In today's fast-moving business world, effectively marketing your company takes hard work, creativity, and the right team. With over 40 years of experience, PIP has been enabling companies large and small to find success in achieving their business objectives. We understand the challenges our clients face. That's why we have a variety of print solutions suited to fit your every need. Whatever your printing request may be, from a quick turnaround on a company brochure for an upcoming trade show, a direct mail piece that needs to be designed, printed, and mailed, to complex marketing projects, PIP is sure to have the right print solution for you. Nothing grabs attention like a well-crafted sign. It can transform virtually any surface into an eye-catching experience, boosting your marketing appeal from banners, 
posters, floor graphics, and window decals, to wayfinding and yard signs. We not only help with sign design and getting it installed, we also integrate them into your overall marketing strategy, designed to help you win. PIP also provides best-in-class integrated marketing solutions to help you make the most out of your next campaign. Our approach to marketing ensures that your strategy is seamlessly executed across all media, online and offline, so your business always looks its best. At PIP, we understand it takes a team to achieve business growth, and that's why we're here to help. Get to know PIP and let us make your world a better place. Welcome back to Heritage Christian School. It is IHSA basketball here on Indian SRN. It's a Class 2A matchup in the regular season finale for both squads. Heritage Christian Eagles 7 and 13 taking on the Elwood Panthers at 0 and 22. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sean Crawl along with Keith Myers. Keith, the, the, draw, the draw came out. Last Sunday, if people want to know where we're going to be, where should they go? They should go to our website. It's up on our website right now on indianasrn.org. I will tell you this. Wednesday, we will be very, very busy. Very. Uh, Sean and I will be here. Yes. Uh, and then we got a surprise for you, folks. We have the Lawrence North, Lawrence Central game for you, and we have the Attics and Cathedral game for you. Uh, live from uh, Lawrence Central High School, and we are excited about that. But we got action all over the state of Indiana. 13 games, first round sectional games are right here on Indiana SRN. But we've got one to finish right here before we move on. And let's talk about some starting lineups. You saw Elwoods there. Let's go through Heritage Christian. Uh, a 6'2 sophomore, number four, John McLemore. A 6'3 junior, number 10, Jack Belt. A six-foot junior, number 12, Alex Belmer. A 6'2 sophomore, number 30, Zach Schlamer. And a 6'5 sophomore, number 34, Mason K. That's your Heritage Christian lineup there in the white with the blue and the black. For Elwood, it's a 5'7 freshman, Jaden Reese, number 10. A 5'10 junior, number 12, Ben DeLong. A 5'10 junior, number 13, Mason Robeson. A 5'10 sophomore, number 32, Will Rutherford. And a 6'1 junior, number 33, whose name I made sure to pronounce right, Limoges. There the you S, go. The S is silent. I had to find. That's one of the biggest things. If you're out there and you want to be a broadcaster, always ask pronunciation. Yes, please. <laughs> please do. We don't hate. We hate hate mouth. Uh, yes. If you're Elwood tonight, your goal, and, 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 and don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make, the coach wants to get this game in the mid-30s to 35. He feels comfortable with that they can win a game if they're at 30 or 35. We'll see. As you can see, Elwood in the gray, Limoges and K set to tip, and quickly it goes to Schlamer, who's up, and he scores just like that. Some man pressure from Heritage Christian. Elwood comes across the timeline, man-to-man -man for Heritage. They have the ball. Nice little give and go, back cut there from Ben DeLong for the bucket. A little Princeton-esque. For those of you that remember Pete Carrill and the oh, famous yeah. upset of UCLA right here in Indianapolis to beat the defending national champions. As bracketology is in full force right now in college basketball, but it is in high school basketball as well with the draw being out. Three from the top of the key from Mason K. No good. Board comes down, and it will go to Will Rutherford, who hands it off to his point guard, DeLong. Almost a steal there by Schlamer. Still man-to-man. -man. Under the bucket, a little bit high. And McLemore comes down with it. Quickly out to Belmer in the corner. Nope. Thought about it. Kicked it back out. Did Belmer. Schlamer thought about shooting it, but then thought otherwise. McLemore has it. Left side arc. Drives in strong to the basket. Can't get it to go. Gets his own board back and scores. Belt did a nice job of following his shot. Rebounds. Blocked out, good job. That is Belt, not McLemore. I apologize. McLemore is the single digit. Almost a steal there from Belmer. And how about this, Keith? According to John Harrell, his top five teams in Class 4A, four of those teams play each other in the first round <laughs> of sectional. <laughs> we'll talk about that more about as that? the game goes on. Top of the key to Reese. 
He's a freshman for Elwood. Looking for some help, picked up his dribble. The defense is always good for Heritage Christian. Macklemore over there on the left side arc, guarding. Double team switch, finds Limoges by himself under the basket, he scores, we're tied at four. You know, did a nice job opening up the ball and then finished, he used the backboard, good job, 4-4. Four, four. Nice job losing the defender, Macklemore in the left corner for three, got it. You know, John has been shooting the ball much better the last three or four games. I think he's on track. That could be a very interesting when it comes to sectional time. You think Rachel and Sarah kind of had some lessons yeah, with him in the I, backyard? I'm sure Sarah took him to court. <laughs> <laughs> nice drive to the rim. Up and in from Jaden Reese. They're sticking around. Seven to six. Heritage over Elwood. you got to call for help when you're there and getting that guy loose like that. Belmer has it. He'll get it left side to McLemore. He's grown a few inches these last few years. Yes, he has. Lamar. Kay has it. They'll whip it around. Belmer now in the right corner. They'll work it around the arc the other side to McLemore. Nice opening all the way to the rim. Thought about it. Almost got an and one. He'll shoot two. I kind of like I kind of like this uh, uh, Owen shot. It, we're going to show again. Look how he opens up for the ball right here. Just opens up. Nice job. Way to finish. McLemore at the line. He makes the first. He makes it 8-6. to six. You see the, the scoreboard there. He's got four already. Looking to make it five. He does. McLemore had 13 on Tuesday night against Shoreridge. So Full court man pressure here. Scoring is uh, coming to McLemore once again. It's playing well, as you can see. Robeson had the basketball. He gives it up to Reese. Very young team here from Elwood. Pick and roll, but got a, got his pocket pick. Schlammer coming down. Has McLemore on the right side. Dish up. Can't get it to go. Gets his own board. Gets knocked down again. Wow. Nice block there. Looked like it was Robeson with the block. No contact there, I guess. So it remains 9-6 to six at the elbow. Limoges gets it back to Robeson and stealing it was Schlamer falling out of bounds. He just pitched it back to the back, the back end. Uh, even if nobody was there, they got to take it full court. That's a smart play. Actually, it is a pretty smart play because now you can put pressure on. But if you're looking at it as a fan, you're going, who's he throwing it to? Right. Well, the cheerleader in the third row, uh, second row was right open. She goes to our school. She's eligible, right? Yeah, that's right. Score. At the elbow. DeLong has it, hands it off. Three ball coming up, no good. And rebound down to McLemore. McLemore comes down left side to Belt. Drives in, up, Euro step, no good, but he'll shoot two as well. Got to, again, as you can see Coach Matt there trying to tell them they got to seal and contain. McLemore's making it pretty easy. and uh, Now we're going to shoot two free throws here. That foul's Belt. on Robeson, his first, team second. None on Heritage so far. It's Belt at the line. Abby, if you're watching, hello. This is Abby. Her, her old marketing teacher, yeah. Oh. I, had, I had Jack's older sister. She's at the University of Tennessee as he makes both. 11-6, midway through the first quarter. I, gonna, I think you're going to see this a lot as a new lineup is going to come in for Heritage. Robeson had it, tried to work the give and go with DeLong, then threw it away. Schlamer up and scores. They've got that nice little give and go work in this Elwood, Keith. It's just the passes on the perimeter that are killing them. And now getting the ball in, thrown away all the way down the court. And what hustle by DeLong to try and get to that. Excuse me, that was Reese to try and get to it. And we've got a we got a line change here for Heritage. Here's the last two. Nice little layup, finished strong. Now this line change. And now they're going to discuss and to see where that ball goes out of bounds. By rule, it should go back where the ball was thrown to, not where it ended. You've got Bryce Riggle, Asher Thompson, Jonathan Dorsch, Miles Colvin and Andrew Wiggins on the floor for Heritage Christian. No, not the Andrew Wiggins that plays for Golden State, in case you're curious. Down low in the post, a little give and go. Coming in strong, lost the handle, though, is Colvin. And it 
turnover to Elwood. Trying to rush the shot. Got to take your time with this team. Munoz had the ball. He's new in for Elwood. Stolen all the way up and down with the left-hand layup is Dorsch. Nice steal there by Asher Thompson. The leads to a deuce. And there's a timeout on the floor. 15-6, to six, Heritage Christian. 30-second timeout. And something new here tonight, Keith, that the sidelines are on the ends of the court. Yeah, they're, they're trying something new tonight. If you're used to Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt and Anderson High, and Anderson uh, High School in the Wibblong used to be on the end zones. It's trying to get a little bit more room. If you're an official, you love it because you're not running into coach, and the coach can't yell at you, <laughs> only on the baseline. Well, the, the, the thing is, is the coach's boxes are four feet smaller down at the end. Yeah. So you got to like that if you're a referee because <laughs> you just run six feet and you can't come get you. Keep them reined in. What games do we have Tuesday night for sectional? Two, uh, I knew you were going to set me up. I am. Uh, I will That's check with you. I'll get right. back with you. <laughs> You're probably going to go to IndianSRN.org. Well, and I will be schedule. because uh, that's where my schedule is. Stay tuned to Twitter. We'll have all those announcements for you coming up this starting this weekend. Robeson brings the ball over the court. A little zone action now for Heritage Christian. Tried to get in the corner. Almost stolen there by Colvin. Skip pass over, three ball up is no good. Rebound on the floor, fighting for it, and they get it out to Colvin. They got decent numbers. He's going to try and go coast to coast, can't get it to go, and Robeson gets the board. He's going to try and go coast to coast, almost blocked from behind. It's turning into a track meet now. Colvin comes down, got it to Dorsch. They'll work it back around. In the corner, three ball up, got it. That is Asher, excuse me, that's Bryce Riggle, a 6'1 junior. Just thought I saw a five there for a second. It's the long sleeves that throw me off. Yeah, he just started wearing those today. I remember, do you remember the first person to ever come out and wear a t-shirt under his jersey? Patrick as, Ewing. Yes, as Robeson goes to the hole, some contact, no foul. Yes, it was Patrick Ewing in Georgetown, in the corner again. High, bringing rain as Bryce Riggle, and he knocks it down. 21 to six. And then it became all the fad. Well, you know, he had a head cold that night, and that's why he put it on. Yes. And it worked for him, so he kept it. That's what you call a trendsetter right there. Well, I will tell you this. There's a trivia question on a coaching staff at Heritage Christian that he was a trendsetter in high school, and I'll let you know what he did that st uh, did some uh, trend, set a trend. All right. Asher Thompson fouled Reese there. You talked about Tuesday night's game, and I got it for you. Yes. Uh, ben Davis takes on Southport at Southport, as you see the three-pointer by Riggle here. The second one. And also Tuesday night, Babuff uh, takes on Garen Catholic at S Shortridge on Tuesday night. Skip pass over to DeLong in the corner. He gets that back up top to Robeson. Robeson drives in, kicks it off to Porter. Porter with the three, no good. Rebound fought for and brought down by Dorsch of Heritage Christian. Colvin. Working his way in, contact on going to be on the floor. Colvin's Colvin's gonna a tough matchup for them. Keith, he's six three, which is more than two inches taller than anyone on Elwood's team, and he handles the ball so well. Yeah, their that, guards are short for Elwood. As a freshman, he's vastly improved as well. Quickly pass all the way down to DeLong, lost that out of bounds. It'll stay with Elwood. From under their own basket, Robeson has it. Mason Robeson, 5'10", junior. 5'10", could be stretching it a bit. Missed shot there by Hunter Salee, who just came in. Coming down, down on the post, kicking it back out. Colvin thought about it, around his back, off the glass. Oh, too strong, but what do you do? You follow your shot. Put it back up, and then it's a 17-point lead for Heritage. And it just blew way quick they stayed in the game for a little bit and then it's 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 lost them a little bit they got that little give and go at the elbow does oh. Elwood can't leave your man oh, no Robeson gonna off the glass he's a good little player yeah I like him and Colvin comes down quickly and says uh no sir Dorsch thinks about driving it spin move off the glass no good follows his shot strong though kicks it out another three ball could it be three in a row no that's way off they're going to get a foul on Wiggins. 
Watch Robeson here. Colvin leaves his man right there. You yeah. can't leave your man here. Nice job there by Colvin, seeing the space and taking it to the hole and nice, scoring. Nice shot by our camera guy. Grant is worth this tonight. Good job, Grant. Rutherford in back in for Elwood. So you've got Reese and, and Robeson goes up again. Can't get it. Five seconds. Can they get a shot off? Coming down is Wiggins in the corner. Up at the buzzer. No good by Thompson at the end of one quarter. Oh, my. Oh, inbounds pass. Stole by Schlamer. And he lays it up and in. I imagine if you're Heritage Christian, you're going to walk in at halftime and tell Coach Jackson. That's six for Schlamer, by the way. Spearmint, big red. Yeah. Juicy, Juicy fruit. fruit. Yeah. Dentine. Because that's how, that's how closely they're covering these. That's a Hoosiers joke for those of you that aren't following. Hopefully you are. Ollie. Yes. With the, with the free throws. Although it is quite a long run for guys to get to the scores table to check in. Hope they don't get winded. Well, you know, you, you got to break a sweat. That's true. Rutherford trying to get around Schlamer. Can't. Looking for someone to pass to. He's in trouble. He got, he got caught in the corner. They're going to say it's knocked out of bounds, but it'll stay with Elwood. See the the breakaway here by Schlamer. Boy, I think You know, he, that, that's a really good no call for the official. He saw him grabbing him, saw the separation, and let him play through it. That's great officiating. That is Rich Deering. He has been around this game a long, long time. Good job, Rich. Asher Thompson and Wiggins back in for Heritage Christian. Robeson has it, gets it to Salee at the stripe. He's guarded by Wiggins. Three ball from Rutherford, good. You're not going to guard me, I'll just knock it down. Yeah, 27-13 halfway through the second quarter. Again, season finale for both these squads as everybody's gearing up for tournament time. Girls State Finals are this Saturday. Got some fantastic games as Wiggins goes up strong. Going to be fouled by Salee, and he'll shoot two. And why we have 15 seconds or so, congratulations to Linton Stockton. Thank you so much for what you've done for Indiana SRN, yes. especially this week. Thank you very much. But Coach Remmel, go get it. First one is good, yes. Coach Jared Remmel and the Linton Stockton Miners took care of business at Jasper High School, as did Lagodi. Knocking off the number one team in the state. Undefeated. Lagodi is the number one team in, in 1A. So. They, they've only lost twice. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, I tell you what, I, I'm, and I really like all the matchups. Yeah, the we, one I may not like the most is 4A, but I think Lawrence North, they play well, could, could give Northwestern a game. North, Northwestern's undefeated coming up from 3A. Oh, he lost the basketball. Picked, got his pocket picked. Thompson has it. They've got numbers. Looking for some help. Driving in, up with the opposite side of the backboard. Should have went up with the left hand, didn't. Limoges with the rebound and getting the foul is Riggle after missing the shot. That's just pure frustration. Yeah, 3A is pretty good. 2A is Frankton, correct? Yes. It's Frankton and Linton Stockton. 3A is Salem and... Trying to do this off the top of my head. Oh. Lagodi, again, Class A. They packed the joint at Jasper. Doesn't hurt when you're 12 miles away <laughs> from your semi-state. So Rutherford has the basketball. They'll work it around now. Reese looking for some help. Limoges with the pick. Reese goes up, doesn't get it to go. Belt with the board. McLemore coming down quick. Red Sea parted, little contact. Wiggins got it, though. Almost threw it out of bounds. Nice job saving it by McLemore. I think ball handling is a huge difference in this game right now, Keith. Yeah. I e think. Everybody on Heritage can handle the basketball on Riggle. Is they're going to call an offensive foul on Riggle. That'll be a second, I believe. In 4A, you have Northwestern versus Lawrence North in uh, 4A. In 3A, it is Salem and Northwood. Northwood's 27-3. and, three. and Of course, in 2A, as we talked about, Linton Stockton uh, takes on Frankton. Frankton is 21-7 and seven as we have a timeout. And a full timeout, we'll take a timeout with them. With the score 24-13, we'll be back after this. 
Life Centers offers love and compassion to all women and men who come through our eight centers. The goal of this love and compassion is that we would not only save babies from abortion, but also transform lives and create families. The forms of this love and compassion are our services. All of our services are offered free of charge to our clients. To learn more about Life Centers, contact us at lifecenters.com or call us at 317-280-2635. Life Centers, we choose compassion. Our YouTube channel and watch more than 700 archive games. Describe today, IndianaSRN.org. Check it out on our YouTube, IndianaSRN, where you're always in the game. Thank you so much. We want to thank Riley Thomason, our guy that's handling the one and twos, and, and the Grant Nesbitt and doing the camera. Oh, had him Touchdown. wide open, up. Oh, and it's blocked. SWAT team got called, and Colvin showed up. But the ball still stays with Elwood. And then, just like that, Dorsch almost picks his pocket from behind. It's on the floor. They're going to call a jump ball here in a second. And it is going to go to Heritage Christian. Okay, you're too young for this, but that reminds me of playing Jacks in the alley. Okay. As the ball, the, the, as the marbles start rolling and you got to collect all your marbles. Never played Jacks before, have you? I, I know what the game is, but but I grew up in the country. Okay, fine. So, city country boy played Rice, with cows. Rice Rickle. I know I wasn't. We weren't farmers. We just grew up in the country. Don't send hate mail. I like I like country people. I married one. The great state of Illinois. I grew up in. Thompson Dole thought about it. Safety was on. Riggle though has been firing away. Colvin's thinking about it. He's eyeing it. Oh, I almost didn't want to steal that from. Oh, nice little move by Thompson, but couldn't get it to fall with the left hand. I didn't want to steal Mr. Ludlow's thunder there. We're going to get a foul. Is that going to be on Thompson? Yes. That's six fouls now all of a sudden. That's his second. Six total on Heritage Christian. One more. And Elwood's in the bonus. 147 to go, as you can see the clock there. 29 to 13. A little pressure here. As they've got Colvin on Robeson, the point guard. Boy, you got to be sweating bullets there. That's a huge size advantage for Heritage. Oh, got by Dorsch. Did, excuse me, did um, Rutherford. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound comes down. Wiggins coming strong. Up and no. And they're going to get him to shoot two as he almost squashed somebody down there. It's at 13. I think that's on Robeson. Yeah, it's his third. Oh, their best player, Keith. Robeson's been their best player all night. That's his third foul. Mm. That's not good for Coach Korn. He's got to consider taking him out here as Wiggins goes to the line, misses the first. You know, as, as well as this game has been played for Heritage, they've knocked down, they have not knocked down their free throws. They got to secure that. I think the second half, you will see that Corey will work on things that they have to work on to be successful for the tournament. Missed, oh, missed both. both. And rebound down by Limoges. Gets it to Reese. They're going to. They kept Robeson in as reaching by Wiggins, but then Robeson stole it right back. Kicks it out. Little jumper right there. Doesn't go down from DeLong. Minute to go here. Colvin coming down up. Oh, oh. he throws it down. I think he had a mission. Colvin, 6-3 with the dunk. He's got four, and it's 31-13. Oh, they're going to get him on the foul there as he reached in on Robeson. Well, let's take a look at it. This is like in the backyard where you knew you're, gonna do, you're not going to pass it. Nice little flush. <laughs> that is a nice little flush for 6-3, yeah. yeah. A 6-3 freshman. We got a timeout here on the floor, so uh, let's review here a little bit. Oh, it is a full timeout, so we will take a break. Or no, you want to keep it here? We'll keep it here. One uh, A was Lagodi versus Pioneer. That's the one we missed there at the end of the girls' state championships. Go go down to Bankers Life Fields House and watch them play. There are some really good basketball players down there. The point guard for Lagodi, her name escapes me now for some reason. She was fabulous. Linton Stockton's got some players. 
I mean, all over the floor. Back at, back at halftime, Keith Myers along with Sean Crawl. 35-15 is the score. Right now is the girls. They uh, won their state championship ring. They won the volleyball state champion way back in November. I don't remember what the final score was, but I know they just killed the team three games to none. Olivia Valentine was uh, the only senior. Olivia, what does that state championship mean to you? Well, a lot, and I, <laughs> and I appreciate it, so it's exciting. You know, they didn't want to come on camera, so they're really nervous. Olivia, where are you going to go to school next year? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm waiting for a few emails back and a few offers. So I heard you didn't make the grade. You might have to come back and play one more year. Have you heard that rumor? No. Okay, I haven't either. Thanks so much, Olivia. Okay, this girl set the ball all the time. Lily, you're now playing summer volleyball. What is... is Last season, has it helped you during the summer a little bit? Yeah, it has. It's just kind of, I got the ball touched a lot, and yeah, it has helped. When in the state championship, when you won a state championship, what did it make you feel like? I know you hit the floor, you were crying, but what, what has that done for you? I've never felt more accomplished ever in my life. It was awesome. Job well done, young lady. And got to got to get Miss Phillips in, so we're going to move you out of the way. You got your state championship ring on. That looks nice. So what are you doing this summer? Um, right now I'm in club volleyball, which is really fun, but not as much fun as school, obviously. How, when's practice start? Like tomorrow, or do you have to wait till August? For school? Yeah, for school. Um, we wait until like June, but it's just open gym, so not practice yet. Is there a chance that we may see a repeat? Um, there is a 100% for sure chance. that. Wow. You said it here that first. Mrs. Myers upstairs, she's your biggest fan. Thanks, girls, so much. Second half action coming back your way after this timeout. You're listening and watching Indiana SRN. Hello, my name is Sean Kroll, and I've been a part of the Indiana SRN family for the last nine years. Last year, we streamed our record 326 sporting events around Central Indiana. All the other guys broadcast basketball and football, but we didn't even ask our end also air volleyball, softball, baseball, and even golf. But we need your help. To continue our mission, please help us by contacting coach at indianasrn.org. Indiana SRN, where you're always in the game. Back here at Heritage Christian School where the earth is moving. It's 35 to 13, Heritage Christian, halftime over Elwood. Uh, the earth moving, we're, we're upstairs and the weight room is behind us and they're, they're working out, so it's doing a little shaking. Um, it is a great game so far from Heritage Christian. We'll take a quick look at some of the scores. Excuse me, as Jack Schlamer has six, uh, McLemore has five, Belt has Four. Belmer has two. Like I said, Schlamer has six. Riggle has two threes for six points. Dorsch has four. Colvin has six. And Wiggins has two for Heritage Christian. A lot of people with five different guys with two apiece for Elwood. And Rutherford has the lone three for the Panthers. That makes your score 35 to 13 as we get ready to start the second half. Like we said, Stay with us here on Indian SRN as we have lots of coverage for you for sectional Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Nothing on Sunday because that's the Lord's Day. But uh, we've got lots of sectional coverage for you. Hopefully you were with us during the girls' tournament, so stick with us during the guys' tournament. It's going to be a doozy. That is for sure. As Elwood comes out, looks like they're coming out with the same starters they had at the beginning of the game. Remember, Robeson does have three fouls. That's a big deal for Elwood. He's been one of their better players, their main ball handler. Starters are back out for Heritage as well. Nice interview. Keith? 
Sorry, he just got back up here and he took a drink. I apologize. Robeson almost lifted the foot there. He's, got, he's in a little trouble. He did get it off to DeLong, though. They run this little – it really is kind of a Princeton system where they run two guys up from the post, Keith, to the elbow and then try and get a cutter to the basket to get an easy layup. And the reason why Princeton did that for so long is a three in the corner – doesn't work because they just didn't have the athletes that everybody else had. Right. So they kind of had to use that system, and it works for a lot of teams. Boy, Belt under the basket. Got it. Oh, oh they're going to call an offensive foul on that one? Uh, they called travel. Oh. Ah, they called a travel. Yeah, you know, the offense that Elwood runs, it's a, it's a you know, you got a young team, so you got to make some things to make them aware because they were playing junior high ball last year. Yes, so you got you got to play that kind of style with them for a year, and hopefully that works for you. Reese couldn't get it to go. Belt thought about stopping and popping from three, but Schlamer will drive to the bucket and score. 37-13, we'll see what kind of adjustments as he has eight that Coach Jackson makes with the starters because these are the guys he's going he's gonna to go to town with in sectional. These are the main guys, as, and it's quickly stolen by Belmer to Schlammer for the bucket. 39 to 13. Timeout quickly by Elwood as the pressure is getting to them. 26 point lead. It's 10 for Schlammer. And you know Keith, Heritage Christian is hosting the 2A sectional. We'll be here as we're following both Heritage Christian and Covenant Christian. Yeah, two, Opposite sides are the same side of the bracket. Yeah, and join us Tuesday night because Tuesday night uh, I will be here on assignment and I will be doing live updates from here uh, to keep you abreast of things. Uh, we're going to try to do that for all the sections that we're hosting right now. Uh, guys are uh, doing assignment work, so I don't know if we got it all covered, but I know this sectional on Tuesday night uh, we will be here uh, as Cecina takes on university. So check up our, our updates uh, during uh, that sectional. Heritage takes on Irvington Prep, and Covenant Christian takes on Howe right here from Heritage Christian School. That's your first round. As there's the, the ball onto the elbow trying to find the post player. Nobody cutting down to the bucket. They couldn't find any passes, so they'll run it again. The buys in that 2A sectional. Go who go to there's only one by on the top yes. half of the bracket and it is Park Tudor. Park Tudor, that is correct. University the University Cecina winner plays Park Tudor. Pass stolen by McLemore and then a reach in foul on Rutherford. We'll see what number that is on him. For some space. Colvin's not afraid to do it. Bang, knocks it down. Got to get my one tribute to Mike Breen in. 44 to 13. Heritage Christian halfway through the third quarter. That's nine for Colvin. Again, he's a freshman. They found Robeson underneath. Schlamer got there in time, but too much contact, and Robeson will go to the free throw line. He's a junior. You know, you look at uh, sectional play, and we look at uh, class four and last night. I thought it was a major upset as Hamilton Southeastern beat Lawrence North. Sean doesn't think that was an upset, but I think that was an well, upset. No, it, it was an upset for sure. Uh, but I tell you what, Hamilton Southeastern has won 15, 13, 13 games in a row, folks, and they are going to be a tough out. They have to play Noblesville round one. Is Carmel. that right? Car oh, they got to play Carmel. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Piece of cake. Uh, their last loss was to Lawrence Central. Is that right? That is correct. Wow. Yeah. I tell you what, high school basketball, you look at the top ten that's been. Wood does the top ten on Indiana SRN on our halftime shows on radio. You look at his top ten. His one and two has stayed the same the whole entire year. But eight, uh, three, and around, there's been change after change after change because, you know, little Greenwood Christian down there in 1A school has, has now reached in the top five. That's how good those teams are. And it's going to be a lot of fun watching sexual play. Well, you got LCLN, and then you've got other schools like Bloomington South. I mean, the South is stacked. Whoever wins that sectional eight, I believe it is, up at Noblesville, or seven. I'm not sure which one well, it is off the top of my head. You look it at has a good shot. You look at sectional ten. Addicts is a great team, and they may be knocked out after the first night of the game, uh, the tournament. Yeah, they're a top ten team, and 
you look at John Harrell's percentages on the, after that bucket by Wiggins, they're like next to last percentage-wise chance to win that sectional. And they're great. <laughs> they won the city championship. Yes, they did. Which we had right here on Indian SRN. Double overtime. What a great game that was. I still watch that when I get depressed. <laughs> That was an excellent basketball game. Three ball up and no good. Wiggins lets it go. And real quick, I have to say hi to our buddies who are watching in Knightstown and Hoosiers Gym. Their last two double headers were tonight. Uh, as their season ends for high school basketball, they'll do a lot of summer ball. But uh, John, uh, John Gardner does a great job out there. Bob does a nice job. Uh, I know they were going to watch a little bit tonight. Uh, who knows? We may have some games out there next year, but uh, Bob Gardner, thank you so much for the time you spent with us the other day. We appreciate all the time that you spent with us. What a great place to call a basketball it game. It was fun. It's been a few years for me, but it was still fantastic as Colvin has it. Adorsh is now in for Heritage as well, replacing Schlamer. So they try and get it to Wiggins. Riggle thinks about it. To finish that thought, Sean, if, if you should put that on your bucket list because oh, yeah. you got to go. You have to go. It, it is fantastic. Boy, Colvin is silky smooth for a freshman. Wow. 48 to 14. He's in double figures for the second night in a row. He's going to be a, come a senior. He's going to be a force. Yeah, he'll grow another and five, yeah, six he, inches. He may, yeah, he may have a few more inches left in him too. That's for sure. Nice dish there from DeLong to Salee for the bucket, 48-16. Just kind of going back to what we are talking about with, you know, with the tournament. It is a, it's a tough tournament. There's some good squads up north, too, uh, that can challenge. But you just never know what can happen as Colvin misses a three. Well, I tell you, a team that's been really good is Lafayette Jeff. Yes. Lafayette Jeff has played well. I think Munster, uh, Munster, Munster has played well. Penn has played well uh, as well. Nice little layup. Nice move with the with the fake pass by Jaden Reese. Riggle thought about the three. They're going to get the pushing foul on DeLong. If you want to know who's where for sectional, there's one of two places to go. Go to IHSA.org or just look up John Harrell. And go to his website. He's got everything there for you as well. Or you can go to our website, and now we have all the brackets for you. It's a nice little oh, raise nice. up by, by Reese. Nice little ball fake there. Up and in with the right hand. But uh, Indiana has already out. We have the whole entire bracket. So all you got to do is you've got the girls' bracket and boys' bracket up there. Well, there you so go. So you can go to our website as well. 1,000 people visit daily. IndianaSRN.org wrote. Dorsch with the three. 51 to 18, under a minute to go here in the third quarter. He's got seven on the night. As man to man still for Heritage Christian. They have Colvin on Robeson. He drives to the bucket off the glass. Mm. Couldn't quite get it to go. It's a nice little floater. Couldn't get it to fall down. Dorsch looking for two in a row. Got it. I'll tell you what, set shot, well, you know, because you're, you're a shooter. <laughs> you got time to shoot. You got. You're gonna sure. knock it down. Oh, you know our best shooter in, the, in our whole entire SRN crew is Thad Van Dever because if you give him the ball, he's never gonna get it back to you. Yeah, I don't like playing with that because he doesn't pass. No, not at all. I'm a glue guy. You know, I defense rebound. Well, I, w I should be taller because I have a pretty, I have a decent post up game. Yeah, you and Charles Barkley remind me a lot of like you Wait, remind no. me of Charles. I, I do what I can. Yeah. I, I, would Just I would prefer to be uh, compared to Zion. Thank oh, you very much. Okay, fine. Jeez. Oh, man. Although he can jump just a touch higher than I can. Two seconds. Got to get it off. Dorsch. Dorsch. Not short. And at the end of three quarters of play, Heritage Christian leads 54-18. to We'll be back after this. You're watching Indiana SRN. It'll be the second on Miles Colvin. Team third in this half. Been a very relatively foul-free second half. Only five total. So here we go. Spring training is alive. I'd love to be in Arizona where the weather's nice. The humidity is gone. 
My son is to be clear, and it'd be Cubs baseball. Well, I will tell you this. Our high school baseball season, we will have – I know for one game we signed already, Heritage Christian, Kevin and Christian, oh, yeah. the battle of the SRN baseball. It, uh, that's always a fun game to do. Keith with his trophy. I know who I hope is announcing that game. Where's it at this year? It will be here. It will be here. Okay. Yep. It's also, is that also a conference that's game? It's a conference it game is. as well. Circle City Conference. Colvin lost the basketball. Picked up by Porter. And he'll give it to Robeson. Guarded by Asher Thompson. Oh, he thought about the three in the corner. Did DeLong, but passed on it. Robeson kicks it out. Porter, nope, he'll drive. Stop and pop. Nice little move. Get the defender moving. Got some space and put it up and in. 54-20. That's four for Porter. Zone defense. Long three from Thompson. Got it. Wow. The 5'8 junior. Coach, I want to shoot, okay? I got to come up with a new one because I was using got it for so long, and now when I watch people do basketball, a lot of people say it. I need my own call. Don't want to say boom or bang or anything like that. Bingo. Ooh, that makes me think of the dog. Oh. I'll, I'll figure something out. I got, uh, I got I, an off season. I'm, I'm sure you got you got a couple of days. Maybe we could get our fans to <laughs> Twitter poll. A, yeah. Twitter poll. What should Sean say? The few games he does, uh, jump basketball. It will go to Elwood as we've got. A substitution, it is number 11, and it is Caleb Williams, it looks like, as well as number 33, Aiden Thompson, who's a 6'8 junior. Well, he's just taking it. He, he's clearing the bench tonight. Williams is a 6'2 freshman. Three ball up, no good from Robeson, and the rebound comes down to Mr. Dorsch. Get it down low to the big guy. Double team kicks it out. We're going to work it around Colvin now. Ooh, offensive foul. Good call. So you've got, let's see, let's take a look here. Colvin's a freshman. Cobb's a junior. Dorsch is a sophomore. You've got Thompson's a junior. Williams is a freshman on the floor for Heritage Christian. Young. Yeah. Just so Very young. young. Not one senior on the squad, Keith. Got to love it. JV or varsity. Which means everybody's coming back. Five minutes to go here in the game. Regular season finale for both squads. As you got to think Elwood's probably going to start to put in some of their subs to hope to get some points. Oh, shoot that shot, young man. As Malachi Dunlap thought about it but couldn't pull the trigger. He is a 5'10 junior on the floor for Elwood now, wearing number 12. Porter has it for them. He's the lone senior. Little right hand baby hook, no good. Colvin coming down quickly. Dorsch thought about it, but instead he drives in strong, gets the foul, he'll shoot two. We'll see who is going to come in at the scores table. One thing about this game, Keith, I think um, a lot of these kids need to eat like me. They need to put on some pounds as Dorsch <laughs> knocks down. These kids are like 100 pounds soaking wet with rocks in their pockets, for crying out loud. Well, you know, it, it, watch the summer. Watch how they'll grow during the summer. They're, you know, some of these kids are freshmen. Okay, 40 is in for Elwood, and from both squads, I do not have a 40. So we're just going to call him 40. 40. Sorry, folks. We apologize. We can only go with what we've been given. Oh, Porter he, zigged when they thought he was going to zag. and He passed the ball to Lily Snyder, and Lily Snyder didn't want to catch the ball. 24. How about that volleyball state championship? Yes, pretty huh? cool. 24 How? in for Elwood. You ready for this? Yes. Peterson Pan. Oh, are you kidding me? I, I kid you not, Keith. Peterson Pan in for Elwood, a freshman. Three ball up and good. 
for Caleb Williams, a 6'2 freshman as the bench goes crazy. 62-20. to Colvin's got the pressure on defensively. Williams guarding Pan. And they're going to be a foul here. Let's take a look at that three from the freshman. Wide open. Got his shoulder squared and knocked it down. You got to like the bench coming off the bench and just having a fun time, good yes. time. And when the starters rally around the bench, guys, Pan gets it down low, out of bounds. It'll go to Heritage as it's off of Salee. Colvin comes down, 345 to go here, 62 to 20, Heritage Christian. We need to get the you need the big guy a bucket now. Dump it down to the post, get it to the big man. Big, he's like a big stick. He's so skinny. He's there, up and under. Oh, Pan with the jump ball. Oh, love it. The littlest guy on the court. <laughs> yes. Ties him up. Yes. Ball stays in the Heritage Christian. Look at the 20. smile on that kid's. He's going to look at the, look what I did. I'm 5'5". Five, five. This guy's 6'8". I just caused the jump ball. Elijah Clarkson in for Elwood. He's a 6'1 sophomore, number 34. Got to love it. That's awesome. Uh, that's going to make his day. Yep. Miles Colvin with the three. No good. Big guy got the board. Got to go up strong. No, he'll kick it out. Darren Cobb for three. No good. Colvin had it. Goes up. No good. Got to get it back to the big man. No, still won't go. Tons of rebounds. And, man, Elwood could not get a rebound there. And Covenant, Covenant excuse me, Heritage just dominated the boards there. It'll stay with Heritage. Miles a little frustrated with himself. Thought he could, should have used the backboard maybe a little bit. Sorry, I'm already thinking of sectional. In uh, my I know. Head. Number 14, Gage Blackford, a 5'8 freshman in for Elwood. Heritage will move to 7 and 8-13 and 13 on the season as they get set to take on Irvington Prep in the sectional this week. And Elwood moves to 0-23 oh as they get ready to take on Alexandria. They play on March 4th. As the buzzer runs out, your final score here from Heritage Christian, the Eagles 67, the Elwood Panthers 20. Great game from both squads as Corey Jackson gets the W. Keith is going to try and get Coach Jackson here on the microphone at the end of the handshake line, which is always a good thing to do. Sportsmanship is the face of the IHSAA, as we like to say, as it should be. Sportsmanship is always paramount in high school athletics, no matter the score, as the teams head to the center circle for the traditional post-game prayer. And Elwood joins them, which is always cool to see a public school do as they will circle around and we'll pray for both squads, pray for safe travel for Elwood and wish each other luck come sectional time as sectional is just right around the corner. Let's take a look real quick at what we've gone, we've got for you on Indiana SRN coming up here in the next few days. We'll take a look here. This is called, in the business, folks, stretching. As sometimes you live and you learn. Let's see. As I'm talking to myself here. We'll take a look at the old schedule, which you can find only on indianasrn.org. Look at all your brackets there to find out all the matchups. And we can look, scrolling down, live and upcoming games by the way this website is fantastic if you have not had a chance to go to it yet and for some reason my personal internet is not going fantastically so I'm stretching even more <laughs> as uh, this is where if you're in if you're in the industry and you're in on the big networks this is where you're in the big bucks that's why I'm here at Indian SRN because I'm a high school teacher by day, otherwise known as superhero, 
But uh, at night, I love sports and love broadcasting. And I think we're finally going to send it down to Keith Myers at half court with the winning coach, Corey Jackson. What do you got for us, Keith? Well, Corey Jackson, congratulations. Eight and th uh, eight now wins. And a good one. Corey coached at Elwood, Sean. I don't know if you knew this, but that's where he cut his teeth. And uh, I tell you what, Elwood, we've been there before as a coaching staff, and it's really tough. But uh, good sportsmanship on your part. But what did you tell Coach after the game? No, I just appreciated, uh, you know, his um – you know his loyalty we talked a lot about the community and and how how uh you know it's just it's, it's a special place with a lot of special people and, and I, I really i think highly of it uh marty wells their ad is the one that hired me to to be a head coach and uh it's just it's, to this day a, a a very special mentor to me um calls me texts me all the time congratulates me for for the accomplishments that we've done here and uh just uh, always look up to him as as um like I said, a really good mentor, and I have a lot of respect for their, their community. Let's talk about your kids. Your kids came out strong. They knew that they had something special tonight, but they came out strong, and they all played well. And that's what you want to do going into sectional because next week it's one and done, and I know you have a very tough Irvington prep team, but I think you put some stuff in tonight that might be uh, tough out to get uh, ready for sectional play. Yeah, that's. I mean, we've been uh, – just really emphasizing that that uh, we got to treat it like every game's our you know our last one. Every practice is our last one, and, and I think the guys have responded well um, in practice. I, I like I like our energy. I like how everybody's contributing. Like you said, I think that's really important. Um, you know, coming sectional time when when your number's called, you got to be ready to go in there and, and, and compete and and give your team uh, the best that that you can. And I, I feel like our guys are doing that right now, and I think we're showing some confidence and. Um, that you got to have that too to, to, to move on. So, Coach, I just want to tell you on behalf of our whole entire crew, we watched you all year long. We got you on TV almost every game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we're part of the fan. We appreciate you. And this guy is a top notch guy. He gives a lot of credit to a lot of people, but he puts in a lot of time. We love what you do. Can't wait. Sign another contract for next year. That's a good thing. Uh, so we'll be hanging. We'll be seeing you all next week in sectional time. We appreciate it, Keith. I, we, uh, I love that, that you guys are here and, and broadcasting for, you know, our, our fans that can't make it to the game. Um, I got a grandfather that doesn't move very well, so he, he can tune in. And a, and a family out of state, and, and I know other, other players do too. We really appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you. And I know your wife watches us occasionally because she's got to take care of the babies. Too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks. God bless you. Well, that's the final for you, and uh, we'll take it back up to Sean here. All right, we'll give you some quick totals before we sign off for Elwood. Porter with four, Reese with four, DeLong with two, Robeson three, Salee with two, Rutherford three, and Limoges with two for 20. Four, Heritage Christian, Riggle with six, McLemore five, Asher Thompson three, Belt four, Belmer two, <clears throat> excuse me, Dorsch 12, Cobb four, Schlamer 12, Colvin 11, Wiggins 4, Aiden Thompson 1, and Mason K3, 467. There you have it, folks. Your final here from Heritage Christian. Heritage Christian 67, Elwood 20. For our statistician, Debbie Myers, our producer, Riley Thomason, our cameraman, whose name I do not know, for our CEO, Jerry Collins. For Keith Myers, I am Sean Crawl. Good night and safe travels in the snow.